Hey guys, how you doing? I know it's been a little while since we did any wrenching, so uh, today we're headed over to work on the tractor. And uh, the plan is, I've got a flywheel puller that I borrowed from one of my new friends, I guess, that I've made through uh, the Facebook tractor sites and the F20, F12, F14, F30 regular site. So we're going to go over there, try to get the flywheels off of these things. And then I'm going to see what's involved in removing the crankshafts. I know that they're pressed in with the bearings and everything. So uh, I, I'm just going to have to see what, what it all involves. I may just consider pressure washing the block as best I can. I've got a, a lot of oven cleaner and um, a rod to scrape out you know, crud and the coolant jackets and whatnot. So I may try to just pressure wash it as best I can and see, see where it goes from there. Otherwise, I've got another friend of mine, uh, Nebraska Kirk, from Yesterday's Tractors, he's willing to send me the, the puck for the bottom of the sleeves so I can use it with my sleeve puller, but I've heard that the sleeves on these F20s, F30s pull really, really hard, so we'll see what happens there, we'll see how clean I can get it and uh, go from there, but other than that, let me show you guys something quick here. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but it's essentially it's a pressure washing gun that hooks up to an air compressor line and a garden hose. So it essentially turns your, your regular garden hose into a pressure washer or a pressurized line, but it'll only it'll only output PSI that the compressor does. So if you have a 155 max PSI compressor, that's all you're going to get for pressure washing PSI. But it's better than nothing. So I'm going to give that a try just to try it out. I got that from a co-worker of mine. Otherwise we'll use Domino's pressure washer, which is probably I don't know, 2,000 PSI, something like that. But anyways, let's head over there. All right, guys, well, here we are. I'm not sure if I showed you this last time or not, but I've got both both engines sitting on one frame. So and I've also got this puller set up and ready. I've got a little bit of tension on it already, but uh, I'm going to see if I can't heat the area up with a torch a little bit and uh, maybe it'll pop loose we'll, we'll see but these these holes in the flywheel or excuse me flywheel are 5 8 11 so you got to clean them out and then run a tap through them and then these are 5 8 by 3 inch long grade 8 bolts that I've got so hopefully Hopefully I can get this thing to pop loose. Now we did, we did spray this down with lubricant um, several times now, so hopefully that helps as well. But let me grab the, the torch set up and see, see if we can get this thing to pop loose with some heat.
Doesn't seem like we're getting much movement out of it. Well guys, I gave up on the flywheel for now. Basically what I'm going to do, I've already degreased the outside of this engine block and cleaned out the coolant passages as much as possible. And they actually came really clean. But I mean if you look at all the crap on the ground here, it was all rust. It was all rust. So, but it's coming out really clean actually. I don't know if you guys can see in here. Let me see if I can get the camera close. And... But there's really not much crap left in there. Except for what's baked kind of between the cylinders just a little bit. Not much. That actually might even be the casting of the block. But it looks actually really good in there. So I'm just going to... Uh, pressure wash the the inside here the bottom and I know I've got a stuck lifter at least one so I got to get that freed up but if I can't get this flywheel off you know just because I don't have the proper tools I've seen guys make uh, pullers with you know 20 or 30 ton bottle jacks so I may not have enough pressure on that flywheel to get it off but if I can't get it off, basically what I'm going to do is just oil everything the best I can. Start turning it to see what it sounds like. If I, ain't, if I don't have any grinding, then I'll probably just clean up the surface of the flywheel with a, a big wire wheel and polish everything up the best I can. And then from there, um, maybe start putting it back together with a... A gasket kit and uh, you know adjust the rod bearings and everything to spec and uh, go from there so let me go ahead and fire up the pressure washer here I'm gonna turn the camera off just so it doesn't get wet but anyhow that's that's kind of what I'm doing right now so let's keep going well guys as you can see I've got the motor sitting back up on the uh, on the frame here, but I'm going to see if I can't show you inside there. It did come really clean, so I'm really surprised. I wonder if I can try and find a, a flashlight here, but it came really clean inside the water jackets. So whatever crud must have been in there must have just settled. And I oiled up all the bearings, and they're really not making a whole lot of noise. So, I think we may actually be okay on this. The cylinders look okay. I put some oil in there. They need to be honed, but actually some of them, you can still see the cross hatching in them. So... But I'm really pleased with how clean the block came out on the inside of the water jackets. And then uh, I'm pleased with the fact that the bearings are not making a whole lot of noise. That's really good. So my plan then, I think, since the, the puller that I had on here didn't work, my plan is... I'm going to take and clean this up all with a big wire wheel on a either a drill or more than likely it'll be a, a angle grinder and then I'll clean up the surface of of the flywheel where the clutch facing meets and I'm going to probably have to put a new pilot bearing in because this one is really not doing too hot as far as turning so I'll have to put a new pilot bearing in there but other than that I think we're gonna just run it the way it is because you know what this thing's 
been sitting these these things been sitting 80 years and they're still still going strong and I'm sure there's engines out there that are running in much 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 worse shape so that's what I think the plan is with this which is good because it saves us work and probably time and money as well I mean I'm guessing I'm probably gonna have some leaks if I if I start it up because the seals you know the main bearing seals and the uh, the felts are probably all dried out and and that but you know what for now it's it's not looking too bad and until I can get a bigger shop and better tools not that Domino here doesn't have a lot of tools but I'm gonna have to probably make a puller for that flywheel when I can do a full rebuild on this but I think it's gonna be okay just the way it is for for the little amount of use that I'm gonna use it for as far as going to the shows and whatnot so yeah I think we're doing all right on a side note you guys aren't going to believe what I did. Um, <laughs> I think I may. That's part of the reason that I put this thing back on the frame is because I think I may have uh, broke my hand. You're not going to believe how, but these, my pinky finger and my ring finger, it really, uh, really hurts to move them. And I don't know if you can see that swollen area, but. Basically what happened was I was starting up the pressure washer out here and uh, This nice big steel welding table Yeah Guess where I pulled the rope into right into this corner Pretty much with all my you know all my strength so My hand really really hurts But that didn't stop me from finishing the pressure washing and getting this thing cleaned up and back on the frame but I might have to go get an x-ray because this thing hurts <laughs> you know I've been trying to keep it elevated when I'm just standing around looking at stuff but it hurts and I have a pretty high pain tolerance so anyhow I'm pretty excited for this thing to be in a, as good a shape as it is and for the block to have clean, been cleaned out as good as it has. And I did have a, a frozen lifter. I got that freed up without really any issue at all. So it's just a matter of uh, getting a few parts and pieces, you know, clutch pieces and a few bearings. I need a pilot bearing and uh, probably a throw out bearing since I've got it apart and uh, clutch disc pressure plate and I'm gonna take the head off of this one because it seems to be in a lot better shape and put it on this one for now and uh, carb kit uh, radiator core and some gaskets for that and head gasket kit oil pan gasket I'll probably lap the valves on that head that came off this one. This one, the sleeves are in really good shape, so I think it had a rebuild uh, prior to it being put together. And then somebody must have left water in it and cracked the block in the winter time here. But the crank looks phenomenal in it. The sleeves look good. There is kind of a ridge at the top though, so maybe, maybe these things have been pretty well worn in. But anyways, I think we're going to just uh, get the few parts and gaskets that we need and heck, I think we're just going to run it and see what it sounds like. So, we'll go from there. Worst case scenario is, you know, I got to buy a, a gasket kit down the road and replace a few other parts, but that's not a big deal. So, anyhow, I'm going to... I'm going to jump back in the car here and put on some clean clothes and I might go to the to the doctor and get my hand looked at. So 
hopefully it's just a bad bad bump and bruise but I don't know I've, I haven't had this kind of pain in my hand before so yeah I don't know <laughs> anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the short amount of video that I did here but it's good news you know it's good news we ain't ain't too far off from hopefully having a runner so yeah stay tuned guys thanks for watching thanks for wrenching with me and to everybody that keeps sending me stuff uh, thanks a lot you know I I always try to at least let people know that I don't I don't need things but it's awesome that you guys are willing to, to send me just even little things and tidbits for the shop here and there is great you know I I, I guess I'm kind of stubborn sometimes I spend money on tractor parts instead of better tools <laughs> but uh, anyhow oh I did reorganize the uh, the license plates in the garage on the wall so I got them all kind of in order maybe I'll take a quick video of that when we get back home but anyhow for uh, for wrenching on the F20 today I think that's going to do it because my hands hurting so I'm sorry I couldn't bring you more but uh, alright back to the house alright guys well we're back at the house now and uh, a couple things Here's the reorganized license plate wall here. So you can see everybody that sent me license plates so far. They're all up there. And then I've got a spot right here where I'm going to put all of my threshing show plaques. They're little 2 by 3 gold gold plaques. I'll put all those right there. This is just a ribbon of all the threshing show buttons I've got, or most of them. Some of them are upstairs in my junk drawer, but I've got quite a few of them. This is my first threshing show right here. The Now Then Threshing Show from 1997, which is our our show that we frequent. I've also been to Rolog, I've been to Almalund. I've been to the Dalton Lake Region Pioneer Threshers Reunion, Threshermen's Reunion. So there's the wall. So my plan is, you know, hopefully maybe I can get a license plate from each state and then, uh, you know, try to go in alphabetical order as best I can. It's kind of what I got going on now, but obviously as I get license plates, I'll have to reorganize them. But and another thing I didn't uh, haven't really touched on, I finally took that carburetor out of the bucket of evapo rust that I got, and that stuff works. Um, I just I left it in there for gosh, it's probably been three weeks at least now. But here is uh, here's the carburetor after I threw some clear coat on it but it it got some flash rust just after I rinsed it off but even after rinsing it and letting it air dry and putting on some some clear coat it still still turned out really good oh, it looks like I missed a spot I'll have to get that so I'll have to make sure I get that here. But it doesn't damage the paint. It only cleans the rust off of the item. So, and this one you can see, see a lot. So, I found that, I see that I have a broken spring here on the, on the choke, so I'll have to have to put a new spring on there or maybe rob the spring off the other carburetor from the other tractor so but you gotta remember to put some clear coat on that one 
All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for me today. I'm going to have to, uh, I might go to the doctor and get this hand looked at. It's it's already swelling quite quite a bit. So, anyways, thanks for, thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for wrenching with me, and stay tuned for the next episode. All right? Talk to you later.